<laughs> Greetings, this is Peter Alexander. Today I'm going to go through the latest updates to Actor Core and how to use the character and animation assets to complete a short video in Blender. Some of the key elements of this demonstration will include how to use the Actor Core website to download and target assets, how to get set up in Blender, how to import and organize animations, and how to use the timeline, dope sheet, action editor, and nonlinear animation menu to put together a scene. The Actor Core website has a wide variety of characters and animations. Aside from male and female, there's fantasy, historical, medieval, modern, sci fi, and toon. Some characters have a unique animation for display, although some of the animations overlap with other characters based on their similarity. For example, the fantasy or sci-fi characters may have a flying spin kick or a dagger stab or something similar to that, whereas the toon characters will have classical cartoon animations associated with them. I'll be focusing on the act and move classical cartoon motions from an animation sequence. As you can see, the animations are quite exaggerated, which is what I'd want for toon style characters and for the scene I have in mind. And just a disclaimer, I am not a professional animator. However, with a bit of tinkering, I was able to navigate Blender's animation system enough to put together a demonstration, which means you can achieve the same results or probably much better. First, from Realusion's Actor Core page, I'm going to download the characters and animations I need. I'm going to be using the Toon Hyde and Toon Hopkins characters for the sequence. I'm also going to be using the new classical cartoon motions. While I'm downloading these assets, I want to mention that the Actor Core website has Blender support materials, including step by step tutorials and demonstrations. When you download animations, there's an option to auto adjust them to accommodate specific characters. In addition, there's zero root and mirror options. Zero root will remove the location keys from the animation, allowing you to better control the placement of the characters. For this project, I'm going to keep zero root off. All of the characters come with facial blend shapes, allowing for expressions and mouth movements. You don't have to re-download characters along with the animations. You can check export motion only and select the character you're targeting. I'm downloading two sets of these motions for the characters I'm using. With the assets downloaded and organized into a few folders, I'm going to set up a few collections in Blender to better manage my scene. For each character, I'm going to create a collection. Although it's not necessary, I'm going to use the Blender Auto Setup add-on to import my characters. Actor Core characters are not really compatible with the Blender Auto Setup add-on, but I do like how the add-on sets up a few material options. You have to import and attach metalness and roughness maps manually, but this only takes a second. I'm also going to play with the materials a bit to get the characters a bit more vibrant. Again, probably not necessary after you set up your scene lights. Now I'm going to import the animations. I would recommend setting up another collection for the animation imports. For animation imports, just use the regular FBX importer and select the files you've downloaded from the Actor Core. You can import multiple FBX files simultaneously. I have a scenario for my animation in mind. So I'm only going to be selecting the ones that I think will be well suited to it. All of these armatures have bones that represent the character rigging in animations. However, the data now exists within my scene, so I can delete these armatures after importing them. Right click on the collection and delete the hierarchy. Now here things get a little bit dizzy as I'll be replacing the timeline with various menus. Switch to your dope sheet, then switch to action editor. With your target armature selected, assign an animation from the actions menu. Do not assign animations labeled tongue base, as it will distort your character's scale and probably cause other issues. If you want to delete the tongue animation data to avoid this, Go to the Outliner and from Display Mode choose Blender File. 
This will allow you to view and delete the tally animation data. You probably won't be able to preview your animations in real time unless you switch to a less memory intensive viewport option. So I'm switching to the matte cap shader. This is how I'll be editing most of my animations. I want one character to be chasing the other, so I'm choosing the animations which I already examined during my preparation for this video. Here I'm just organizing my animations a bit. You can rename whichever animation is currently assigned to your character. I'm also browsing the animations to see which areas I want to split and merge to form a story. Toon Hyde is going to be chasing Toon Hopkins through the forest with outstretched arms. So I'm going to be using the same animation for both characters with a few alterations. In addition, Hopkins is going to trip and fall as he's running away. So I'll be merging that animation with one that has him running previously. This will be done through the NLA or Nonlinear Animation panel. A very important part of this process involves using the nonlinear animation panel. From here you can move the animations you sample in the action editor and adjust them almost exactly as you would in iClone. Any keys you add to the action strip will appear above the NLA tracks and will remain there until you choose the push down option. This will turn those keyframes into a new NLA track. Once you push down action keys to an NLA track, your action editor will reset, allowing you to repeat the process and create new keys in another NLA track. This scene starts with Hopkins being nervous and scared in the forest. He is spotted by the monster, whose footsteps cause him to look behind him. Frightened, Hopkins begins to run and trips. I'm marking the first few NLA clips so you can better see where I've snipped and merged them. You can assign an animation key by selecting a component of the armature and pressing I, which will allow you to key specific elements from a pop-up menu. The keys are visible through the action editor or dope sheet. Here I can see that I'll need to add a transition clip, which basically blends the animations together more seamlessly. A transition clip can be inserted between two selected clips by going to the Add menu. NLA clips can be split by moving your Timeline Navigator to a chosen point, right-clicking and choosing the Split option. You can also directly tweak NLA clips by selecting a bone and going to the Action Editor. From there you can see the various keyframes for each bone and can edit them. Editing keyframes can be a cumbersome process without a control rig, but you can make it easier by using the search bar in the outliner and knowing which bones to animate. For example, if you wanted to move an arm, search for arm, choose the upper arm and not the twist bones. This takes a bit of practice. Here's a time lapse of me going through the process of manipulating the keyframes and NLA strips. For me, this was trial and error. If you already know your way around Blender, this will not be overwhelming. I decided I was going to have the Mr. Hyde character stop and scratch his head in confusion once Hopkins trips. Then when he sees Hopkins is able to recover, he resumes his chase. It gives more of a cartoony feel.
To make a character's eyes glow, first thing you'll need is to isolate the eyes either through textures or by assigning a new material to the eye mesh. Then adjust the properties of emission and emission strength. These can be keyed on the timeline by clicking the diamond on the side of the property. Facial morphs can be keyed in much the same way. Select the main mesh, go to the object data properties. Here you can see all of the morphs associated with the mesh, which are called shape keys in Blender. These can be dialed in and keyed by adjusting the property and clicking the diamond next to the slider value. For the background and atmosphere, I simply created cylinders and bent them slightly, UV unwrapped them, then attached a tree bark texture I found online. The ground is simply a four-sided plane with some very basic texturing. And for the backdrop, I found another image online and imported it as an image plane. The fog was added through an add-on called EV Express, which has a number of lighting and atmospheric tools and which can be purchased through the blender market. <laughs> and with that, I will wrap up the video. This is Peter Alexander. Thanks for watching.